Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, the one uh, thing that came up in a number of comments from uh, uh, the neighborhood uh, in, uh, in our correspondence was uh, the, uh, the, the size of the dock. So uh, I'm just, and, it, and it's quite a, a bit larger than a traditionally allowed. Um, uh, is that just, is, are these concerns being raised because the dock's large because we're talking about 21 households? Uh, is the traditional legislation or policy in place for, you know, what I would describe as a single family use dock, and therefore it would have to be larger even if there were two residences being built, for example? Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, in the city of Aurelia, we did not regulate docks until 2014. So uh, people were able to build whatever size of dock, the number of docks that they could, while getting their approvals from MNR and, and Transport Canada. And so um, Mr. Morgan has provided an image on your screen, which he shows a number of large condominium docks in, in the area. And um, they're, they're in the range of, of 70 to 80 meters in, in length. And so again, these are um, approvals that were all received before we began regulating docks. So our first foray into regulating docks, we essentially did uh, create regulations for a single family waterfront lot to have a single dock on the property, um, three meters by 15 meters. We did not build regulations in for condominiums that want to offer multiple uh, slips for their residents. So that's uh, a reason for the, the request. And presumably had we contemplated uh, this type of development, we also would have, I'd assume, put a proviso in or provision for a larger dock than we did for a single family. All right. Thank you. I'm very sorry. I will come back to you, Councilor Munn, but uh, Mr. Morgan, on, you want to come back just, in? Just on the dock issue, for I'll be very brief. I know that we're pushing time here. So um, this image on your screen illustrates um, illustrates three docks within five-minute paddleboard ride of uh, the subject property. And you can see in the middle here the, the sort of pink purpley uh, rectangle. That was to the best of my ability an accurate, an accurate representation of the size of the proposed dock. Okay, so... What I'm illustrating here is that Sophie's Landing Phase 1, which is the dock furthest to the left on your screen or furthest west, the length of that dock is 70 meters and its width is 22 meters. Our proposal is for a 27 meter wide length long dock, 27 meters by 18 meters. So Sophie's Landing is two and a half times longer. Sophie's Landing Phase 1 is two and a half times longer and, and wider. Uh, Invermere Bay Condominiums, which is the dock at the bottom of the same bay as the subject property, 73 meters long. We're proposing 27 meters. The width of Invermere Bay condominiums is 17.6 meters, which is just, just shy of what we're proposing. Uh, Orchard Point docks is approximately 84 meters uh, wide. We're proposing 27. Uh, sorry, 84 meters in length, we're proposing 27. And the width of the Orchard Point condos uh, docks are 36 meters, which is twice as wide as the ones that we're proposing. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I'm really just trying to illustrate that what we're proposing here is, is entirely typical of what you would see for a multi-unit residential development. Thank you, um, Mr. Morgan. Yes, okay, uh, Councilor Mon on this. Uh, thank you, Mayor Clark. Uh, I just want to comment on the traffic issue uh, because, um, you know, in the five years that I've sat at this table, that has been a constant irritant that, um, the Ministry of Transportation uh, has a set of technical requirements, and unfortunately, uh, none of the studies to date have uh, come close to meeting the technical requirements. And, and since they rule on that, uh, my sense is that um, those staff have worked diligently and continue to um, lobby our our our. Uh, professionals at the Ministry of Transportation and I was speaking with Mr. Sugden the other day and we meet twice a year with the ministry to to tap, to resolve issues between the city and and the province related to transportation and this one is always on the agenda uh, so far we've not been successful uh, my gut says that we might be more successful if the folks uh, who are impacted by this were to um, uh, take the time, the energy to write their provincial members of parliament, um, not only complaining about it, but uh, providing anecdotes. 
uh, of uh, the concerns they have and, and the uh, uh, near misses that they have been involved in uh, so that you bring alive in, in your stories uh, to our members of Parliament the reality that you face on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I do know that that will, in fact, uh, have some influence in, in terms of helping the ministry um, adjudicate uh, requests from the city on a go-forward basis. Thank you, Mayor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Morgan. Sorry. One more thing which I think is important to add. Um, the fact is that this property um, could be developed um, as an apartment building without any council approval required. Uh, nothing more than site plan approval would be required to develop an apartment building on the site, which could quite likely um, or, or, or would almost certainly have a higher density than the proposed 21 units. So there's no holding provision on this property. So I truly believe that what's being proposed here, it's a medium density development, 21 units. We need council approval for a plan of subdivision and we need uh, council approval for the site-specific provisions in the zoning bylaw. Um, however, a developer could come forward with a plan that required absolutely no public input or no council approval here, which would be an, a, of a higher density here and arguably a greater impact on the uh, intersection. So I just, I, you know, it, it's important to say that, I, I believe it's important to say that because the developer has a property that's in an intensification area and where we have to come before you to seek a permission. There is an alternative which is not the form of development that my client is looking for. It's not what he builds or wants to build, and I don't believe it's what the public wants to see there either. So we would like to be your partner in communications with the MTO, but we absolutely do not want um, potential approvals of these applications to be delayed um, as we await some unknown date when the MTO may respond. Uh, thank you. Uh Mr. Morgan, uh, much appreciated. I, 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 I will say that it does lead me to a couple of points. Uh, like Councilor Eamon, uh, this issue about the traffic lights has been brought to my attention since very early on in my first uh, term on Council. And, uh, and uh, I visit Orchard Point with some frequency, and I can tell you that I have myself experienced uh, what it means to turn left into traffic on, uh, on Highway 12. And, and I have also experienced near misses. I think I, I only say this because I think I fully understand. Well, not only that, also turning right off of Highway 12 <laughs> into Orchard Point, it can be problematic because you've got to stop. Um, I mean, the traffic, you come off of Highway 12 and the traffic's 80, 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, some people slow down to the proper uh, 50, 60 kilometers an hour at that point. Some don't. And if you're hitting the brakes uh, without, a, without an exit lane, and turning right off the highway, it, you need to be cognizant of what's going on in your rear view mirror when you do that. So it is a, it is an interesting uh, scenario. I think it's, I, 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 uh, I'm astonished at the disconnect between the city has been lobbying the provincial government for the Ministry of Transportation Ontario, and and saying, uh, yeah, it may not meet your warrants, but it certainly is uh, a, a priority for the city. And, and in fact, the city passed budget for it a year or so ago to pa to do a to do a traffic study to try to support our argument, to take it to the MTO. Um, uh, so uh, uh, so I, uh, personally from the chair, I like the provision that they put in there on the peer review, because the peer review is not an unknown date. Uh, uh, to your point, Mr. Morgan, it is a, it'll be uh, something that information that will be turned around in a very, very uh, imminently and then form this report as it comes back to council. <laughs> the other thing that absolutely surprises me, and I know there are people on Orchard Point who have had property for decades and planned on building their retirement home there. And now they can't. With a, wave, with a strike of a pen, or a wave of a pen, uh, it's, it was, you know, they, the, the province uh, uh, deemed that area as an area of intensification a number of years ago. And of course, the, the city needs to, uh, has to uh, uh, follow that. Now we're doing another official plan review, which may, um, which may and I say may, uh, lead to council recommending to the province that we um, what's the phrase I'm looking for, Ms. Lewis? And not de-intensify, but... Uh, down designate to stable neighborhood. Sorry, down. Down designate to stable yeah, neighborhood. down designate to stable neighborhood, which would limit the, the, the development in the future. But as you said, Mr. Morgan, we're already faced with uh, this area, which already has site plan approval for some development. I think there's one next door to it, and then there's the apartment. Sorry, then there, sorry, there's the apartment building uh, that could be an apartment building across the street. And, uh, uh, and all those things combined with the present development there uh, have not, done nothing but exacerbate the traffic issues at that intersection. Um, 
Anyway, that's mostly what I, uh, what I have to say, and I hope I w- we've addressed most of the comments we heard from the, the public. The pathway along Highway 12 is, is quite interesting because it's actually not a pathway, and it's certainly not a sidewalk, uh, although unbeknownst, unbeknownst to me it, uh, until we, we got a hold of the MTO to find out why it was inadequately sized. Apparently, it's just a dumping station for snow when they, when they plow Highway 11. Uh, so people use it as a, wa- a sidewalk or as a, as a, <coughs> a cycle path, uh, but it's actually, uh, it's actually neither. Um, any other, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Fowles, you wanted to back in. Fowles, you want to back Thanks. Uh, just a quick comment. It was kind of building on uh, some of my questioning before, but I just uh, kind of an informal comment, if it's possible to pass along to the developer, if there's any opportunity to preserve some need of foliage or woodlot, uh, just uh, encourage them to, to please do so. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Fowles. Uh, Councillor, you've been conspicuously quiet. Councillor Campbell, go right ahead. Thank you, Mayor Clark. I'll make this quick. I know we're over time. Um, appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Morgan. The uh, covered deck, so my understanding is that there is an existing building there that would be torn down, which leaves a cement pad, which is approximately 1,800 square feet. Am I correct here? Through Mayor Clark to Councillor Campbell. So, um, the. Uh, yeah, the the intention is to remove the. Sorry, sorry. Um, the intention is to remove the. It's a. I guess it's a boat house. It's a. It's a house. People have lived in that building for a long time. So the intention is to remove that structure, and then put a basically a deck over the structure with with a like a roof. So it would be like a, like an, an open air, uh, an open air deck. Okay, if I can follow up. Um, 1,800 square feet, so it says up to seven, uh, 170 square meters, which is roughly 1,800 square feet, if my math is correct. And uh, I'm up there, so 1,800 square feet makes more sense to me than 170 square meters. Um, that's a massive deck, is it not? For a, a, a development that's 21 units, that just seems really excessive. And what concerns me most is that it's, it's actually in the water. I, I just wonder if there's any opportunity to make that, uh, that deck smaller. I realize it would involve removing part of that uh, concrete pad or whatever that structure is that it would be built on. It would also bring it back a bit from the water and maybe make it a little more reasonable size. I wonder if that was considered at all. Who would like to tackle that one? Ms. Lewis, I'm going to start with you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. The, the shoreline protection plan that was written for this development um, spoke about this particular uh, deck, and they, they felt that by uh, placing the amenity space in an existing um, area that has been disturbed was the best f- for the, the shoreline. And so there there was a lot of rationale contained in their shoreline protection report for, for keeping the foundation in situ and minimizing the disturbance to the, to the shoreline. So that really was was where the rationale um, had, had come from, was trying to uh, actually implement the Lake Simcoe Protection Plan and, and uh, support the shoreline. That's almost like Councillor Cipolla's point earlier, I suppose. It's a form of, uh, of shoreline protection. Yeah, so basically it's been there for a long time. So Let's not disturb it and let's, okay, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you all members of council. Um, I would like to uh, call, go back to Mr. Sugden and bother him uh, as our Director of Services and uh, Direct Development Services and Engineering to explain uh, the process from here. In accordance with City Policy 8.3.1.3, Council will not make a decision on the proposed draft plan of subdivision, draft plan of common elements condominium, and zoning bylaw amendment until the consideration period of at least 14 days from tonight's public meeting has lapsed. However, if Council wishes to defer this planning matter as set out in option 3 and 4 of the planning report, it's recommended that a resolution be passed by Council now to provide staff with direction with respect to the reason for the deferral. Thank you very much, Ms. Lewis. As a result of the proceedings, are there any recommendations you wish to bring to the attention of this particular chamber? 
Uh, staff recommends option one in report DSC 2001, and that is that the draft plan of subdivision 43T19002, Sophie's Landing Development Corp, 3941 Orchard Point Road, including the proposed conditions of draft approval for final approval as generally set out in the draft form of Schedule C to report DSC 2001, be presented to Council at the next available meeting subject to completion of the City's peer review of the traffic impact study, that the draft plan of common elements Condominium 43CD 19002 Sophie's Landing Development Corp at 3941 Orchard Point Road, including the proposed conditions of draft approval for final approval as generally set out in draft form and Schedule D to report DSC 0. 2001 be presented to Council for its consideration at the next available meeting subject to completion of the City's uh, peer review of the traffic impact study and that the application of the Zoning Bylaw Amendment D14-886 Sophie's Landing Development Corp 3941 Orchard Point Road as set out in Schedule E to report DSE 2001 be presented to Council for its consideration at the next available meeting subject to completion of the City's peer review of the traffic impact study. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Lewis. Is there anybody from around this particular table willing to move forward a proposed resolution? Councillor Heen and Councillor <coughs> Emond. Um, uh, I suppose you're raising your hand to support staff's recommendation. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Heen, seconded by Councillor Emond. <coughs> Please bear with me. I am about to repeat uh, what uh, Ms. Lewis just said. Moved by Councillor and seconded by Councillor Emond. It is recommended in the report DSC 2001, dated January 10th, 2020, from the Development Services and Engineering Department. The draft plan of subdivision 4319002, Sophie's Landing Development Corp, 39 or 41 Orchard Point Road, including the proposed conditions of the draft approval for final approval is generally set out in draft form and Schedule C of the report be presented to Council for consideration at its next available meeting subject to the completion of the City's peer review of the traffic impact study and that the draft plan of common elements condominium or CEC 43 CD 19002 Sophie's Landing Development Corp 39 or 41 Orchard Point Road including the proposed conditions of the draft approval <clears throat> for final uh, approval as generally set out in draft form Schedule D of the report be presented to Council for consideration at its next available meeting subject to the completion, once again, of the City's peer review of the traffic impact, stu impact study. And finally, <clears throat> that the application for zoning bylaw amendment D14886, Sophie's Landing Development Corp 3941 Orange Point Road as set out in Schedule E of the report be presented to Council for consideration at its next available meeting, subject again to the completion of the City's peer review of the traffic impact study. Is there any discussion from around the table? I'll now call the question all in favor. That is carried, thank you. Uh, I'd like to go back to Mr. Suggins, our development, uh, Director of Development Services and Engineering to explain the subsequent process uh, in uh, in the planning process, steps in the planning process. Thank you, Mr. Sugden. Formal consideration of these draft plan of subdivision, draft plan of common elements, condominium, and zoning bylaw amendment applications will not occur until the city's peer review of the applicant's traffic impact study has been completed to the city's satisfaction. Once this is being completed, at a future council meeting, council will be presented with a supplementary memo that includes a recommendation ab about the proposed development. A one who wishes to be directly notified of Council's decision respecting the proposed development must leave a written request with the clerk using the form which is provided for this purpose in the agenda holder at the back of the Council Chamber. Indeed, thank you, Mr. Sugden. With that being said, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn this planning meeting. Moved by Councillor Heen, seconded by Councillor Spola. All in favour? Thank you. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, the Orchard, anybody who showed up for the Orchard Point file, <coughs> Um, uh, for their patience in getting through that meeting and also for those who are here for uh, an exciting announcement in the next few minutes. Uh, thank you for your patience and to those at home. The, uh, and apparently that audience is vast at home. Uh, but um, the, uh, my question for council is, uh, uh, I'm going to suggest we're gonna need a recess to get through the following meeting based on how long we took at that meeting. We can do a five minute recess now I'm seeing a few nods of the head. I need a motion to approve that or to move that forward. 
Moved by Councillor Follis, seconded by Councillor Heen. Uh, all in favor? Okay, we'll recess. Sorry, we won't recess. We'll, uh, we'll reconvene at 625. So you have about five minutes uh, to uh, do what you need to do. And thank you again for your patience the next five minutes.
Okay, if members of council want to work their way back towards their designated spots. Megan, did you get it? So tiny, but it's, it hits the spot. <laughs> you want this separately? He's happy if you're happy? Isn't it supposed to be... Okay, well, uh, I will call the meeting, uh, this meeting to order, and if staff would queue us up to, uh, for, uh, for Old Canada. standing we'll just uh, take a moment of uh, sign of contemplation thank you Would somebody be so kind uh, to make a motion to approve the agenda before us? Thank you, Councillor Ainsworth, seconded by Councillor Campbell. Um, if, if there isn't any discussion, I will call the question. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, any disclosures of interest? Councillor Campbell? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Clark. Yes, on uh, consent agenda item number two. Uh, with the uh, Aurelia Square Mall. I am an employee of the Township of Severn uh, where the mall is located and therefore uh, will not be speaking on that one. Thank you very much. We will uh, separate that out for, uh, for consideration. Councillor Lauer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Clark. Um, I will not be participating in uh, agenda, uh, agenda item report one, clause one, or bylaw 2020-6. 
um, as I have a business interest in the area. They, they both relate to the same matter. Thank you, sir. What was the first one, Councillor? Report number? Sorry, report one, clause one. Thank you. And uh, uh, Councillor Heen, my goodness. Yes, um, report one, clause number two, that's uh, uh, 136 West Street North. I live almost directly across the street from the proposed pro property. Thank you. And uh, continuing the record setting night, I have uh, a couple as well. Um, with, uh, with respect to delegated authority, report one, clause five, as I have a, a relationship with the city on an annual seasonal basis uh, for a patio license. <coughs> and so, and uh, also with um, respect to the grants committee, I participate, I have a business that participates in a couple of those uh, uh, community festivals, <coughs> those being the uh, stormy night, starry night, hopefully not stormy night uh, studio. That was this past weekend, uh, studio and gallery tour and Roots North Music Festival. You did such a nice job. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's have some fun. Okay. Uh, I know that not all of you are, are here for the exciting agenda items on the rest of the agenda you're probably here for. Um, uh, and actually, I actually find those quite exciting, just so you know. Um, I didn't think I would earlier in life. But uh, anyway, uh, so we will move on with the, uh, what I think is a quite exciting time of the year. That's a Citizen of the Year uh, presentation. Um, and just to be uh, a little bit of context, uh, the really a, a packet and times are... are um, one of our beloved papers, uh, of course, closed the doors a, a few years ago, and they were uh, wonderful in uh, starting and, and keeping the uh, Citizen of the Year Award alive on an annual basis. And of course, when that ceased to be the case, <laughs> a couple of us got together and... Um, uh, Councillor Sapola and I and uh, recruited some uh, some poor souls in the uh, in the community, uh, some former winners, and, and kept the uh, the process going. So uh, that's essentially what tonight is about. And if I could, just before we do get going, uh, I regret to announce that we had uh, the passing of a former citizen of the year in, uh, in Colin Wackett. <clears throat> if I'm sure most of you around the room <clears throat> know Colin. He was absolutely tireless in his support of events um, and causes at the Legion. And, uh, and one of those, by extension, was uh, the Ride for Dad, which was an annual uh, fundraiser, a very significant fundraiser, where people came from all parts of the province to participate and raise money for uh, prostate cancer uh, research. So, and their arrangements are, the, are this, uh, this week. And, and, um, and I know Ruth is, is here tonight, but we also have the recent passing of Alice uh, Stamper, who, uh, who uh, also uh, may not have been a citizen of the year. I don't really recall at the moment, but certainly did many, many wonderful things in, in, our, in our surrounding communities and really. Um, anyway, if I could, I'm going to just call out the selection panel. I know a couple of members could not be here, uh, but if they could join me up front, uh, that, would be, uh, that would be terrific. Uh, Anderson Charters, who's uh, with me right here, and uh, a former citizen of the year, uh, myself, uh, although I was a non-voting member, just to help to facilitate the meeting. Michael Gordon, <coughs> uh, very recent uh, citizen of the year. Uh, Ginny Stringer, I see Ginny up there. 
Um, uh, Bruce Waite was unable to make it, as, uh, as well as Aurelia Matters editor uh, and reporter uh, Dave Dawson. And Aurelia Today reporter Frank Mattis. And Wendy Timpano, general manager of the Community Development Corporation of CDC, is unable to join us tonight. But, uh, uh, gang, thank you very much for, for donating your time over the last couple of months to, uh, to ensure that we we're able to move this uh, forward. Um, uh, we had some great discussions and uh, some very worthy uh, recipients, <laughs> potential recipients. Um, also, I'd like to say that the beautiful award that the, uh, that the Citizen of the Year is going to receive tonight was, uh, was made and donated by Joe Watt, or Joe Watt Trophies, and he's, <clears throat> he's uh, committed to donating that uh, going forward on an annual basis, and I'm not surprised. So I'm just going to give a, a, b a brief list of all the nominees um, that, uh, that were, uh, uh, of course, uh, were put forth. And then uh, we've nailed it down to uh, five, uh, five finalists, or sorry, the, the voting members did. Um, and the nominees for 2019 Citizen of the Year include... <clears throat> Dean Beers, if you don't know, Dean was uh, the, the easy outgoing president of the Chamber of Commerce. Amanda Bowes, Bob Bowles, Judy Catania, Bruce Duncan, Ruth Fountain, uh, Rose uh, Ganton Thatcher, Thatcher, Carolyn Marie Goodwin, uh, Nancy Hanna, saw her here somewhere, uh, Stan uh, Matheson, uh, Brent Maudsley, Dr. Kim McIntosh, uh, and, and Steve Orr. And honorable mentions to, uh, to uh, Lucy Goodman and Zach Waite, a couple of youth that were nominated, and, uh, and, uh, which I think is a wonderful idea. So did the members of the, uh, of the committee. So we're going to get to back after this process is over and we do our debrief. We're going to contemplate what we can do to encourage that kind of uh, nomination uh, going forward. So uh, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, the uh, the finalists, and if I would have, maybe I'll have Mike as our most recent winner, and uh, maybe or just as we call these people forward, we'll uh, we'll have you come forward for a quick picture, and then we'll sit everybody. Uh, you can just sit down, and then we will uh, then we'll announce the winner. So, uh, in alphabetical order, making a grand entry tonight. <laughs> uh, if you weren't here, uh, Ruth came in and, and got all of our attention. Ruth has served uh, our community and surrounding communities tirelessly in numerous volunteer capacities. Ruth volunteers at Soldier, Aurelia Soldiers Memorial Hospital, Foodland Aurelia, preparing grocery orders for shut-ins, the Aurelia Fall Fair, uh, Aurelia Public Library, and the Salvation Army, just to name a few. Ruth continuously attends workshops and encourages others to learn about our, our environment, heritage, health, and food. I'm on for her, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth came in and did three cartwheels on the way into the church. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Nancy Hanna does a lot of work in, in uh, the neighborhood in which I live. Nancy actively serves the community in numerous volunteer capacities, including St. David's Church uh, Children's Club and Regent uh, Park Public School Parent Council, the Sharing Place and Scouts Canada. Nancy continuously demonstrates that she is committed to enriching lives of the others. I have personally witnessed that at St. David's. <clears throat> Dr. Kim McIntosh. Dr. McIntosh goes above and beyond in her role as local physician, and that was the unanimous consent of the, uh, consensus of the group, whether in her role as program uh, medical director at Soldier Memorial Hospital for integrated care, medicine, and patient flow, or as a member of the board at the Kuchichink Family Health Team. She effectively, uh, effectively inspires colleagues to mobilize, work collaboratively, and is always leading by example. 
She has also played a vital role in the regional planning table and in moving our local <coughs> Ontario Health Team initiative forward. She has been an active member of the Aurelia Arts community, uh, seen on stage in two Mariposa Arts community theater productions and courtside uh, coaching basketball. Dr. Kim McIntosh exemplifies what it means to be passionate about the community. I witnessed that at the Ontario Health Team. If you don't know what the, the initi initiative, you'll be hearing about it soon. Uh, at a conference, uh, Kim, who's been involved in the health industry for quite a number of years, you swear it was her first year with the enthusiasm she brought to the uh, the table that day. Dr. McIntosh. Thanks. Stan Matheson. Stan has a passion for this planet. And in the fall of 2018, <coughs> he initiated Sustainable Aurelia with the goal of encouraging the community to take action and build healthy lives for the people of Aurelia, our children, and our grandchildren. Uh, Stan has been instrumental in ensuring the seriousness of climate change is understood and that the individuals understand how their actions can make a dif difference. And uh, I know I've spent some time with Stan in the last year. Come on down, Stan. And last and certainly not least of our finalists, uh, although I, I believe he's actually out of the country, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Steve Orr, although Kevin Gangloff is here tonight, uh, is a, a very worthy uh, step stand-in, I will say, Kevin. Steve is a long-standing business owner, a supporter of, uh, and sponsor of local events, local artisans, and a champion for youth serving groups, hence Kevin's appearance tonight. From sponsoring and supporting the Aurelia Youth Center, Aurelia Concert Band, Roots North Music Festival, Aurelia Opera House Summer Theater, uh, Aurelia SPCA, uh, Romero Chamber of Commerce, uh, Vallis Sound Studio Project, uh, to the uh, uh, Camp Kuchichin Community Initiative, just to name a few. Steve has supported numerous community endeavors, as you can see, and I believe he was also nominated last year. Now, Kevin, if you would come and accept that for Steve. Listen, uh, uh, I know that, that there is, is only uh, one citizen of the year, but quite frankly, there's uh, uh, quite a number of winners, certainly the finalists that are here tonight. Um, and, and I'm familiar with all the folks that were nominated and, uh, and the value that you bring to our community. So thank you very much. You do much for many others to aspire to and, uh, as I say, and do indeed rich, enrich our community. So without any further ado, well, maybe 20 seconds of ado. Okay, we had to cancel our Citizen of the Year award. <laughs> so, our 2019 Citizen of the Year, Stan Matheson. Yeah. <laughs> 
Staying with me and just uh, saying a word or two. Well, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm really surprised um, at the, the nomination and, uh, in fact, being the, uh, the winner, being a finalist and the winner. Um, you know, Sustainable Aurelia is, um, I think it's important to the community it's a, because it is the community. It is the community, I think, expressing um, itself in a, in a way that will move us all towards a more sustainable future. It is indeed a team effort. Um, and I'm honored that uh, as, as, the, as the chair, I've been uh, selected as citizen of the year, but I really, uh, it's so important that I, uh, that everyone understands that I share this with all of the people on, on sustainable, both the board, the sector chairs, and all of the people who work on the committees uh, to bring forward um, opportunities to, for us to better understand what it means to be a more sustainable community, uh, to, to work hard to bring speakers into the community that work hard to put actions on the ground. And um, so to all of my colleagues in Sustainable Aurelia, I would like to thank them for that. I would like to thank the committee for uh, the nomination and for the selection and for the city uh, who continues to support uh, the Citizen of the Year Award program. I think it's very important um, because this is a great small city we live in. Thank you so much. Yes, you can. <laughs> so, uh, Stan, yes, we did. The city did make the Citizen of the Year uh, Award sustainable by hosting it. You're right. Um, I, I will say when I opened up the award, the inner uh, award was actually uh, in a plastic bag. So I'm going to take that home and use it with, for my dogs. Um, <laughs> before we do a single plastic, a single use plastic span. Oh, yes, if all the nominees, if, if uh, Ruth and Nancy and Dr. Kim and Stan uh, and Kevin would uh, just uh, join JR at the back of the uh, back of the room, we'd like to get a group photo, please. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> Stan, do you want to take? Uh, I'll grab one. Just, just taking one for the picture, maybe. <coughs> well done, sir. Well done. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you too, man. Yeah, absolutely. You've been down south? Uh, no, I got been under a lamp? Got high blood pressure? Uh, no, but I spent five hours in emergent Friday night because I was satting 81. My oh, asthma right? acted up for some unknown you're, reason. Your O2 was 81? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where did everybody go? Actually, we have one. <coughs> Hang around. 
<clears throat> Jenny, thank you, and thanks for the, uh, the phone call today. It was a very good suggestion. But we... All right, meeting. Okay, no deputation tonight <clears throat> after our exciting presentation. Um, with respect to the minutes of December 9th, 2019, re um, regarding our special counsel uh, 2020 budget ratification, December 10th, 2019, special counsel re municipal organization review and pay equity compensation review. December 12th, 2019, public meeting re-planning matter. December 12th, 2019, re regular council meeting. Would somebody be so kind to make a motion to approve those minutes? Thank you, uh, Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Councillor Heen as a seconder. All in favor? Perry, thank you. Sure, Anderson. Uh, nothing under correspondence, uh, though we had a number of it uh, related to our planning matter earlier. Uh, reports. And uh, we have a motion, uh, I presume, uh, with a couple of exclusions, at least for uh, 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 articulated conflicts. Is there a mover in their seconder to put this on the floor? Councillor Heen, for, uh, a mover. Councillor Sapola, seconder. That the report number 2020-1 uh, of Council Committee now before Council be adopted with the exception of clauses 1, 2, and 5, which shall be introduced separately. Thank you, Dr. Kim. <laughs> Seriously, the passion that she has for the health care in this community is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Okay, any discussion with respect to the remaining items on the report? agenda. <clears throat> Just a reminder for those uh, watching at home that uh, we have a couple of parts of the agenda, one under reports, one under consent. Um, under reports, uh, these are items that were all discussed and moved forward for ratification this week at Council Committee last week. And uh, so we capture them all under one motion and thus we have to move some out for change of direction or for conflicts and we are doing that uh, right now. But the rest of them, and if you um, want to know what they are each, each specifically, they're certainly on the website and there's uh, paper copies available at City Hall. Don't hesitate to, uh, to find out what they are. Uh, any further uh, uh, discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Apparently that's what they used to do when they wanted to talk at the council table. Yeah, yeah. Even in your day, wasn't it, Ralph? It was before your day? I'm not kidding. At least I didn't think I was. Maybe I'm kidding. Now we're, um, this is report 1-1 one, one, without Councillor Lauer. Is there a mover in there, a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Ian, seconded by Councillor Klustra. That clause one of report number 2020-1 of Council Committee now before Council be, this is with respect to land acquisition. Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Carry. thank you. Come on back into the fold, Councillor Lauer. <clears throat> <coughs> report <coughs> item number one two with respect to uh, basically a non-designation uh, um, by the uh, municipal heritage committee with respect to 136 west street north councillor heen has taken her leave on this one uh the motion is before you a mover and a seconder councillor ainsworth thank you councillor remond that clause two of report number 2021 of council committee now before council be adopted further discussion the bell cravat. Um, I will now call the question. All in favor? Carried. Thank you.
start over. That clause five of report number 2020 1 of Council Committee now before Council be adopted. Is there any Council Councillor Campbell? I'm sorry? Oh, moved, moved by Councillor Campbell and seconded by Councillor Ainsworth. All those in favor? It is carried. Uh, sorry, that re uh, cleans up all the clauses of report uh, item number one. Uh, with respect to report number two, Councillor Heem, would you mind? Oh, we're going to do the other ones first. Okay. Uh, with respect to Grants Committee, the really a perch <laughs> festival, the really Scottish festival, uh, and, this, and uh, the studio. No, that's it, I guess. Are they right there? A mover and seconder, please. Uh, moved by Councillor Iman, seconded by Councillor uh, Sapola. That is recommended in the Grants Committee Report 2020-01, dated January 14th, 2020, the following 2020 Partnership Program for Cultural Events and Events uh, Grants be approved. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Clerk. Um, Aurelia Perch Festival, $2,500, and Aurelia Scottish Festival, $2,500. And that the 29 Partnership Program Cultural F Events and Events, Cultural Festivals and Events Grant application from the Aurelia Kennedy uh, Committee be approved uh, for $2,500. Um, any further discussion? I will now call the question. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. It on. Okay, so it, that is recommended in Grants Committee Report 2020-01, dated January the 14th, 2020. The following 2020 Partnership Program for Cultural, Cultural Festivals and Events Grants be approved. The Roots North Music Festival for $2,500 and the Starry Night Studio and Gallery Tour for $1,500. Do I have a mover and a seconder? By Councillor Ainsworth, seconded by Councillor Sapola. All those in favour? It is carried. Okay, we now have motions, and this one was with respect to uh, uh, 70 uh, Mississauga Street, not Mississauga Street, sorry. And I will wait for the motion to appear on the screen. There it is, a draft zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, is somebody willing to put that on the floor? Councillor Iman and Councillor Ainsworth, thank you. <clears throat> that further to the public meeting of council held on, this, held on December 12, 2019, council approved zoning bylaw amendment application number D14885, Bridget and Carrie Taylor, 79 of Saga Street, thank you, in accordance with the draft zoning bylaw amendment set out in the supplementary memo dated January 10, 2020, from the Development Services and Engineering Department. Discussion. I will now call the question. All in favor? Carrie, thank you.
Well, I don't know if I want to do that to the folks at home, but I do need to run upstairs. Councillor Heem, would you be so kind as to uh, take the chair for about uh, four and a half to five minutes? Thank you. <clears throat> So we're at the consent agenda. Is, is, has anything been, put, been pulled from the consent agenda? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, at this time I'm aware of item two being pulled with respect to the transit service to the mall. Councillor Campbell has declared a conflict on that item. And <coughs> Councillor Clustra is wishing to speak to uh, item number seven, which is vehicle for higher licensing. Okay. What's item two and seven? Okay, so we have a motion to, for the other, or either just to speak to or a change of direction. Uh, Madam Chair, if we have a mover and seconder to get this motion on the floor, that will separate item two to be dealt with with a separate motion. And um, after this motion is read, Councillor Klustra can speak to his item. Okay, that's fine. So do I have a move, move by, by Councillor Eamon and seconded by Councillor Ainsworth? that Council adopt the recommendations to set out of the consent agenda for the regular meeting of Council held on January the 20th, 20th, 2020, with the exception of the recommendations with respect to the correspondence, item two, which shall be introduced separately. Comments? So, Councillor Kluster, you wish to... Yes, thank you, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair. Just in regards to uh, consent item number seven, with uh, the regarding to the the ec extra transportation services that are, that are not offered in the city of Aurelia, this is the second time I've read this type of letter from Mr. Winnicott. We do have a letter uh, on the tomorrow night's DOMB agenda as well. And it's very concerning to the point that uh, I have been in his shoes where you have been downtown in certain times of the evening when you've been out and there is no way to get home. You can certainly call a taxi cab and uh, there's not enough taxi cabs in the city of Aurelia when there's a night, there's an event at the casino. And I think this is a problem where uh, this council should try and address to have a, a little more options for citizens if we're going to be making these restaurants and areas uh, successful. And I think we need to look at other um, other services like Uber and Lyft to uh, certainly come back to this council to give a little more um, choice for residents who want to get home safely. Thank you. Um, I think, I'm sorry, I think we, we need, we're, we're going to introduce that item separately, is that correct? Okay. Three, Madam Chair, I believe the councillor just wished to speak to the, to the matter so it wasn't actually okay. being pulled. Okay, okay. Councillor Cipolla. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I, from my understanding, maybe through you to our CAO, there's a report coming next week on this actual uh, item on our agenda, if I'm not mistaken. Through you, Madam Chair, Councillor Cipolla is correct, it, um, with the exception it'll be February the 3rd. So your next Council Committee meeting, Mr. Crawford will be before you with a report on this issue. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay. Although, all question all those in favor it is carried speak up okay <clears throat> um, so, so the the uh, item number two which should be introduced separately so so do I have a mover move moved by Councillor Ainsworth second by Councillor Eamond that the recommendation with respect to correspondence item number two on the consent agenda for the regular meeting of council held on January the 20th, 20th 2020 be adopted. Is there any discussion? Councillor Cipolla. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I think uh, a word of thanks should go out to the Severn Town Council, Severn Township Council, uh, for their support in this because without their support, uh, I don't think we would have had a bus going up to them all so uh, I think a th thank you should go to them as well and be, 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 be noted but by our, our, our staff then a letter of thank you any further comments can I call can I call the question all those in favor it is carried 
Okay. Now if I could just get back to the agenda. Can you have me my... Can't get back to these. Put Demary's iPad as close as I can't get back to the agenda. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so the next item, and mine is blocked on me. Okay, the bylaws. So, um, I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Ainsworth and seconded by Councillor Cipolla. Bylaw 2020-1, a bylaw to amend Chapter 170 of the City of uh, City of Aurelia Municipal Code, Municipal Bylaw and Law Enforcement Officer. 2020-2, Amendment Number 77 to Bylaw Number 2014-44, the Zoning Bylaw for the City of Aurelia at 70 Nottawasaga Street. 2020-3, a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement between the City of Aurelia and Monaris Solutions Corporation. 2020-4, a bylaw to deem lots 8 through 17 and 61 through 66 on Plan 292, not to be a part of a plan of subdivision under Section 54 uh, of the Planning Act 2690083, Ontario, Inc., 640 Atherley Road. And 2020-5, a bylaw to amend Chapter 454 of the City of Aurelia Municipal Code, User Fees, Property Services. Are there any comments? All those in favor, it is carried. <coughs> it, it got locked out. <laughs> Hold on a second, just let me sign this one. I didn't know your code. Congratulations, Stan. Uh, a bylaw to approve. Uh, uh, is there somebody a mover and a second to put this on the floor? Moved by uh, Councillor Ainsworth, seconded by Councillor <coughs> Kluster. Thank you. A bylaw to approve an agreement of purchase and sale with Aiden Mesh for property at 385 Homewood Avenue, Aurelia. Uh, this bylaw approves an agreement of purchase and sale, thank you, with Aiden Mesh for the property at 385 Homewood Avenue, Aurelia, as recommended by Council Committee. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, and lastly, um, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings tonight. A mover and seconder. Thank you, uh, Councillor Campbell. Second, thank you, Councillor Lauer. Uh, that bylaw number 2027-7, uh, that is, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at its meetings held on January 20th, 2020, be enacted. Thank you. As, as I said, moved by Councillor Campbell, seconded by Councillor Lauer. Any further discussion? All in favor. Harry, thank you. I'll entertain announcements. Councillor Ainsworth. 
Yes, uh, through you, Mayor Clark, just wanted to encourage uh, members uh, here as well as uh, folks who are listening at home. This weekend is the amazing uh, Winterfest out in uh, Severn Township out at Otis Park. I know I uh, attended last year and it was uh, pretty phenomenal to see what they're up to. This year they're going even uh, bigger and better with some of the stuff, so definitely uh, check it out. I know it's uh, a lot of Aurelia folks who do go there as well and uh, people in the surrounding communities and it's a nice uh, big community event, so definitely check it out. Thank you, Councillor Ainsworth. Any further announcements? We'll now have open public forum. Not always easily orchestrated without a public. Uh, we have our wonderful members of media, but uh, no members of public. In that uh, case, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, moved by Councillor Ainsworth. Not the first meeting you've moved to adjourn. Uh, seconded by Councillor Fallis. All in favor? That is carried. Safe home. Thank you. Stay warm. <laughs>